Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me as we take a look at the astrological energies of August 19th through the 26th, 2020, and what is happening and unfolding for us as we move through this week in August. We just had a powerful Leo new moon with the sun, moon, and Mercury all gathered together in the late degrees of Leo creating a grand trine with Mars in Aries at 25 degrees and the galactic center and south node in Sagittarius at 26 degrees. This was an energy of action, inspiration, motivation, and what you're ready to launch into next. And as this new moon energy moves through us, it then takes us into Virgo season where we have the ability to refine, organize, and process prioritize what is essential. So when you have a spark of energy that's very strong, very clear, very determined, as Leo energies are, you then have the gift of Virgo that says, well, what is the practical use of this? How am I going to turn this into something? And how is this going to be useful, helpful, healing of service and manageable? So this could be the week when you're really getting your duckies in a row, where there's things that are coming together, lining up, decisions are being made, choices are coming up that maybe you're going to have clarity on. And the gift here is that Mercury is now moving into Virgo as of August 19th. Mercury has been moving fast. And as Mercury is in Virgo, we really get to the nuts and bolts of what matters and what's essential. And this is where you could feel more decisive. You could have clarity. You could have that sense of, okay, I can't do this. And you wipe away half of your desk and say, I need to focus on these three things right now. Or this is what really takes priority in my life, in my daily schedule, and in what needs to be completed. So Mercury in Virgo is very strong and it gives our minds and our communication skills the ability to get to the point and to wipe away anything that's excessive. Mercury in Virgo is excellent at finding solutions, at understanding what could work and trying it. And this is wonderful for any type of solution, any healing solution that you're looking for, anything that also supports moving energy through the body. Because we are entering Virgo season this week as the sun moves into Virgo, August 22nd at 11.44 a.m. That's Eastern Daylight Savings Time. And when we have this focal point now on Virgo energies, we're coming into greater realignment with our body, mind, and soul. And that's one of the gifts of Virgo energy is that it connects us to our physical reality, our body, our body's messages, what we are feeling internally in our physical selves, and also the capacity of the mind to really look at what you need right now, what would be essential, healing, supportive. And this is meant to be a very grounding energy. This is where you're really clear on what you can manage, on what you do have control over, as well as taking that strong Leo energy of creativity, expression, passion, will, determination, confidence, and applying it, really grounding it into your body, really feeling stronger in yourself, body, mind, and spirit so that you can operate from a, it feels like a healthier capacity. The Virgo energy does a lot to heal us in a very practical way. And what I mean by that is because Virgo can show us what works, what doesn't work, what is essential, what is effective, what is something that is worth spending your time and energy on, it can bring you to a new awareness of what you need right now to support your energy. This is where we make new decisions around our health, food, nutrition. You tap into exercise, lifestyle, routines. What are you doing every day and is that really good for your energy? Is it really helping you to feel strong in your life on a daily basis? The Virgo energy brings us into contact with the messages of the body and we can even hear them more. 
almost as if the cells in our body become a little bit louder and want us to tap into their consciousness and want us to hear what they're telling us. So know that over this next week, we have grounding influences that bring us back into our body consciousness and your physical needs, your physical needs that maybe you were tuned away from or you just had some distance from, this is a gathering and a returning back to what is happening within you at a very deep level. And it could be that you begin a new conversation with your body or with your organs. You you start talking to your spleen or you hear something from your liver, your stomach, your kidney, and you understand more of what your body needs right now to feel supported. And I'm thinking about this in terms of any kinds of vitamins, supplements, herbs, essential oils, again, water, food choices, exercise, etc. All the ways that we need to take care of ourselves. Uh, Virgo is about grooming and hygiene and being aware of the needs of the body. So this is important because I feel like energetically, our bodies have been moving through a lot of energies in 2020. And now we're really coming back to get to that essential understanding of what we need to feel supported every day. And that the changes or choices you make right now can really improve your overall energy level. Virgo is also the energy of simplifying and refining so that a system can work better. It can perform at a higher level, be more efficient and be more effective. So there is an energy of improvement here and looking at what you can improve in your life in very small measured quantities. These are the little daily changes you can make, the little things you can make, say, at every meal where you eat more vegetables or everything you can do to just make some small incremental changes that matter and that pay off in the long run. Virgo is good at routines and sticking with something and overall making an, an improvement in your daily life. So as we enter Virgo season, these are all good themes to be aware of and ways to work with the energies so that you're really tapping into what you can do right now that maybe you didn't have the time or energy for earlier this year. Now that we've been moving through 2020, we have an understanding of changes and how life has shown up in very different ways. Come back to yourself and look at what your energy needs that you're ready to tend to and take responsibility for. Now, the other thing that is unfolding this week is that we're actually receiving some big incoming energies from the sun. And I thought this was such a fitting and powerful way to close out Leo season, which is ruled by the sun. And also the energy of that Leo new moon um, is tied to this as well, but we have a big CME coming to the earth and that is a coronial mass ejection that is expected to be working with the earth's atmosphere and magnetic field August 20th. It actually left the sun August 16th and it was a, a solar flare and it's coming through. And what happens with these um, coronial mass ejections is that they have a geomagnetic storm impact on the Earth's atmosphere. And so it can affect some of the power grids on our planet. Um, it can affect satellite operations. So if you're looking at your phone and you don't have service or it's taking longer, it can certainly be an influence from the sun, these coronial mass ejections. And then sometimes this also affects migratory animals because they're sensing the change and, and they can feel it. So these types of impacts are really interesting. We don't always hear a lot about them, but they are coming from the sun. Uh, Solar flares and coronial mass ejections happen pretty pretty often, Uh, but this one's especially big and it has a bigger impact. And you can even see how it will show up in the auroras, how it will show up in those northern lights and how they dance across the magnetic field of the planet. So know that we are getting a surge of energy from the sun, And not only does that affect Earth, but of course, it affects each of us individually. We feel it uh, in our sleep. We feel it in our physical selves, in our aura. Um, I've actually been having more headaches. I never get headaches. And I've had some headaches this week. I'm just picking up on 
some of these bigger incoming energies. I find that it can be helpful to drink more water. You might be hungrier. Um, you could feel off in a way because of course we're going to feel these influences and they're going to be working with us even if it's in a very subtle way. A lot of energy is dancing around us all the time and when we have these bigger influences coming through, they do affect our daily lives. They do affect what we feel, what we sense, and even our energy levels. So know that that's one of the influences happening over this next week. Um, the coronial mass ejection is supposed to graze the earth's magnetic field around August 20th, and they can last for 24, 48 hours or longer. So just be aware that that is something that is incoming. And of course, part of this ongoing dance that we have with the cosmos. It is a good time to make use of the energies of these last few days in Leo. The sun in Leo wants us to really be inspired about our lives, to have an area where we're feeling very confident and courageous in who we are, what we're about. And basically it lights up that energy field. It lights up the strength of the solar plexus. It lights up what you are here to experience in your life that brings you joy and happiness and brings you a sense of strength in who you are. So look at where you can add more of that experience to to your life right now because I feel like there's something really beautiful about this sun in Leo energy that is also clearing us out. It's like blasting away something that was stuck or stagnant. It's returning us to more of what we want and what we need and it feels cleansing. It feels like a solar cleanse or something that helps us remember and tune into what we want in our lives. And yes, we have multiple variables in our lives around what we can do in a day and even, of course, what is happening in the world. But the sun in Leo energy and the force of that Leo new moon was about returning to the core of your energy field, the core of your existence, the, I just see it as, it's like the core of the sun. It's, it's, but it's the sun within you, which would be the solar plexus. And it's that place of eternal growth, eternal creation. It's almost like going into the very center or the very heart of an energy field and it's still very alive and it has movement and it has this capacity to keep flowing and regenerating itself. In last week's show, I talked about how we can feel anxiety in the heart when energies are unsettled, when there's a lot of chaos, a lot of movement, a lot of tension, when we don't quite feel centered, grounded, or clear. And it's very possible to still be feeling that chaos in your heart or that anxiety that something within you is not fully resolved yet. Um, there's something that maybe it, it's circulating and it doesn't have a place to land. And I'm feeling like what has actually come through during that Leo new moon and I'm even going to say with this incoming coronial mass ejection from the sun, there's something about gifting us with a higher vibration of light. And think about the sun's energies and the, the warmth and the neutrinos and the light codes that come from the sun. And that energy is blasting in right now. And if you were to set your intention for clarity, for cleansing, for, for being cleared of any of this anxiety, you could feel that there is something that is, it's like it's a warmth or a re-energizing message, something around a, a connection to the strength of the sun. That's just how I'm seeing it as a strengthening of why you're here, a download of, it feels like a, a confidence. It, it feels like it's a return to the soul's intention of existence. And as I'm saying this, there is this very strong energy in my third eye that I can, 
My third eye is just feeling so much pressure right now. And I think this is how I'm experiencing the energies that are even cleansing and clearing out. It's almost like if anything in your energy field is ready to be upgraded, if it's ready to be shifted, um, this energy from the sun is supporting that. And I have been getting a lot clearer visions lately around different energies and people and situations and experiences and all these things that I'm understanding are part of my own personal awakening or ascension journey. And in fact, they're wanting me to tell you that um, back in 2010, 2011, I went to a, the doctor for just kind of one of those routine checkups. And they found that some of my um, hormones were imbalanced. And so they ran some tests and noticed that my pineal gland activity was really high. And said that, you know, I needed to do an MRI and I need to go through all these um, different tests to test it. And of course, this is just an anecdotal story. I'm not giving any kind of medical advice here, but it was also connected to my psychic development and my intuitive skills coming in really strongly. And so I had these energy showing up through various tests. And I went and got a second opinion and a third opinion about what was happening in my brain. And it was all of this activity connected to my pineal gland. And I realized, you know, looking back that there were things that were developing in my third eye and my psychic abilities that I wasn't aware of at the time. But that's how the energy came through for me. And then it was working as well with the pituitary gland and other things that were happening. So part of what we feel with these energies is that they do blast away something that maybe was stuck on you. Like I'm seeing like that calcification or the energy that is covering up something. And as it starts to get removed or peeled away or unraveled, we can feel that. We can sense it. We can understand that there's something happening within us, uh, perhaps, you know, physically, but that there's also the energetics that are taking place. And everything turned out to be okay. I just had a lot of activity in the pituitary gland and in the pineal gland. And this is actually when I started doing acupuncture regularly because it was how my body was able to work with the energies. It was very supportive. It was very easy. It was very comforting. And it was a way to work to move the energy. So at these times when we have very big energies coming through and they can show up in any number of ways, you can also look at it through the lens of your own ascension process and how your body is physically ascending, which correlates strongly with these Virgo energies, how the body is renovating itself, how the body is clearing out something, how the, how the body is healing itself and helping to support what needs to develop as part of the new human or the new physical self. So this could be a phase over this next week, over Virgo season, even longer than that, that you are actually awakening to more of your own intuitive or psychic senses through the body and that the body is actually showing you more of your capabilities and your spiritual gifts as long as you trust it, as long as you really are in that loving partnership with the messages of your physical self, which is why, yes, you can have a conversation with your kidney, with your spleen, with your heart. Any part of yourself is, is energetic and it, it has a consciousness. It has messages and it feels like both Mercury and the sun in Virgo are going to help support us in connecting with those messages and with those skills so that they can be put to use. They can be supportive of your journey now. So again, this, why, this is why it's important to come back to paying attention to your body and what messages are coming through uh, that are supporting you, even if it feels a little odd at first, there's just energy moving through. And to look at which chakra the energy correlates with. So the third eye for me is usually very easy to identify. And it's clear then that something is opening up there. Um, if you are perhaps dealing with some kind of energy in your hips, well, that could be related to the sacral chakra. Um, anything in your heart obviously would be the heart chakra, uh, et cetera. So what you could do is look at your physical body and wherever you're feeling the energy, feeling the sensation, correlate it to the nearest chakra energy field and see what correlates there, what's being reprogrammed, cleansed, detoxed, 
purged, reworked, and ultimately supporting the energy in a higher capacity. Now, I have a few other astrology transits that I want to touch on, but I am getting this very strong vision that I'm supposed to talk about, and I'm getting the image of a commander, and this is a different energy than what I've talked about in previous shows, because I know in previous episodes we've talked about the high council or the high commander, which feels like very galactic energies of uh, beings and I'm going to call them cosmic forces that are supporting the earth right now. What I'm getting the image of is a commander, but not of that high council. It's like a, it's like a different energy. And it's funny. He's really, he's like super handsome. And I'm like, you did that just to get my attention. Right. And so he is basically an energy that is reminding us that the earth can only accept so much energy at once. And he's showing me how when you water a plant, that plant can only receive so much water. Otherwise, it is flooded. The water doesn't absorb. The water you know, goes through the pot or onto the floor. Um, it's like an absorption energy where you, you reach capacity. And he's saying it's because of the different root systems in different plants. I know nothing about plants. And so he's just showing me there's different plants that can absorb different amounts of water. And so what's happening throughout this year is that there's just different absorption rates that the planet can ultimately efficiently use. It's almost like if there's too much that comes in, it just overpowers our systems, similar to um, these energies from the sun coming in that are really big. And so his energy and his, I'm going to call it his domain, is kind of this monitoring of what we can receive. And there's a regulation of energy is what I'm seeing. And that regulation is to give us time to work with energies and to work with what the physical body can handle, what what the body can actually do in a day. Because For example, we need our sleep. The body needs its downtime. The mind, the brain needs to go offline from the human realms and relax. And so he says this is all correlating to basically that body, mind, spirit connection of what is realistic to expect of ourselves right now because there's so much happening on the planet. There's so much circulating in the cosmos and it's a very big picture. And I have talked about before that there's many agendas, many, many agendas right now on the planet. And we can say that it's really about a bigger spiritual or energetic we'll call it a war uh, between light and dark, but within each of those, there's many agendas within the light, within the dark, and that there's these very polarizing influences that are disguised and cloaked. He says there's a lot of cloaking right now where energies are hiding behind other shields, other, other cloaks, and that it's very difficult to understand the full picture and that It's not even essential or necessary to understand the full picture when what you're focusing on is more of what your energy needs right now. And so he's he's kind of showing up as like a a coach, like a commander coach of, you know, where our energy is best used because it's really easy to get lost into these bigger agendas, these multiple agendas, and all the things that actually are not being presented accurately. Um, Because of the cloaking and the hidden agendas, um, he's saying secret societies, um, he's showing me different um, figurines from various cultures that are influencing what's happening today. It's sort of like there's this long story. It's like there's this ancient story that's unfolding on the planet and that it's really deep. And it like, if you make it too simple, you miss out on some of the other energies. And even this presentation of it, I feel it gets convoluted or or quickly gets shifted around. And, And he's saying it's because the earth has a lot of resources that have been fought over. And again, different agendas for what those resources are, because it's not simply gold or some of the uh, cloning or human DNA as resources, but it's the energy of the planet as a resource. And so there's all these things that are way 
beyond what you might think is happening or what is unfolding. Um, and it's almost like he's showing me how there are, what are they called? Um, puppeteers, right? Who pull the strings that are trying to orchestrate or move human energy together down one direction or down another direction. And then another energy comes in to try to correct it or to keep things in balance. And then there's all these layers of energies that are being manipulated through different puppeteers. So it quickly becomes very elaborate. And what he's saying is that the most important assignment or task right now is to focus on the next vision of earth. That it's it's like doing a timeline jump where we're in this reality and we understand or can see things, but he's saying, what is that seven year jump? What does the earth look like in seven years? And I know I've mentioned this before. I don't remember what we were talking about now, but there was that seven year timeline. And it's something about so many people are here to build that new experience of the planet, but you can't build it if you're distracted by what's crumbling or what's over or what's ending. And, and, this is like, there's so many things that are just over and things are like, I get the image of people grasping at ropes, right? Grasping at straws, like doing anything they can to stay in power, to stay relevant, to stay on the earth. And there's been a lot that's been removed from the planet. And it's like, they're showing me like these scoops, like things have been scooped out or energies have been scooped off planet. And now they're saying that it's time to focus on whether it's a seven year plan or longer there is this focus on but the rebuilding and that it starts within us and it's saying like it's the rebuilding within your body first. And you know, it's interesting because seven years is how long it takes for the body to turn over all of its cells. So that's interesting too. If you think about how that would sync up for thousands or millions of us that we're all regenerating the physical body with a new intention, higher energies, more light, greater clarity, uh, healing. There's been a lot of healing that's taken place. There's this regeneration that's more important right now. And he's saying that that's where our focus should be. It's like to not be overly focused on right now, especially um, in the year 2020 with this election and whatever's going to happen. I mean, I don't mean to sound flip it, but the energy of the U.S. is changing so much over the next four years that you know, to be president or to be, it's, it's almost like there's so much that's going to be out of your control because there's bigger cycles happening here. The U S is changing in huge ways over the next three to four years. And it's going to be a tough job, no matter who has it. It's an unprecedented position at this point, because it's something that ultimately is beyond the scope of, of any, um, country. They're saying that there's just bigger cycles here that are going to move the planet forward and that that's why so many people are being called forward and called up right now is that you're being needed to rebuild your energy, really understand who you are, what your body needs and what your work in the world is. And he's also saying it's part of why we need to at times keep our head down and focus on your immediate energy, not the planetary energy, which can be interesting because so many people feel that that is the focus. And at times it is, but he's saying that there's more of this stabilizing energy right now, that that's, what's going to help the planet because in the next number of years, it's like having a, um, the next platform. So when people ascend, they need others to already have arrived at that platform or that space to be there to help build assist. And that because this decade is so big in terms of the giant changes and the energies happening and the way that things are going to shift permanently, there are many who are already being given exactly what they need to move forward. And this is also, he's showing me too, there's like a changing of assignments for many light workers. And star seeds where maybe you did something for a certain number of years and you were proficient at it and really good at it. And now you're just bored and you don't want to do it anymore and you're not interested. And now you're looking for the next thing. Well, that's going to come in too. that next assignment, um, that next area of expertise. And then by moving forward into your next chapter, you're energetically opening up the space for someone new to come in who is passionate about that line of work and what they can offer people. So again, it's like this, this overarching energy 
is changing. It's, it's changing in ways that we've never experienced in this lifetime. But he's also saying it's bigger than any, any like century. It's, it's something that's really significant. And to tune into a higher timeline, because that higher timeline is going to give you what you need. Similar to tapping into a future self. And that future self is going to give you the messages or understanding that you need now. And then he's saying it's actually in five years, there will be a surge, like this surge of energy. I think it's people. I think it's like the masses. It's like a surge of people coming through these gates, showing me gates opening like a flood, a flood, almost biblical in its imagery. And I can't tell you how intense my third eye is right now. So I'm going to take a quick break and I'm going to be right back. You won't notice that because this is a podcast. I'm going to edit it out, but I need to ground myself. I just took a three-hour break, which of course you wouldn't know, and I realized I could easily edit that out, but I thought it was important to understand how we have to take these energy breaks and get into our body. So I went and did Pilates, and that really helped move the energy for me, and it was vital to allow the body work to happen. This is also part of Virgo energy is the body work that we do to ground the energy. So now that three hours have passed, I'm back and I'm able to focus on more of these energies that are unfolding for us over the next week. So Mercury and Virgo is going to be very inquisitive and make an interesting quincunx to Chiron in Aries retrograde at nine degrees. And this quincunx energy is attention. And again, it's a strong focus here on the body with that Virgo energy and then that Chiron and Aries energy, both relating to how we use our physical selves, how we work with energies. This is on August 24th, which is the same day that we have the exact square of Mars and Aries squaring that Saturn retrograde in Capricorn. So this day could be a little bit tough energetically. It could be a day to just go slower, adjust your expectations, be very mindful of what you're doing physically. There's a lot of physical energy here and you want to listen to what is coming up for you. Now, this Mars in Aries has been working with us for the past week or so as it squared Pluto in Capricorn, and now it's squaring that Saturn in Capricorn, and this is when we take a pause. So August 24th, go slow, give yourself space, don't rush anything, and look at where you're either being triggered or feeling impatience or frustration for something that you can't move along on your own terms. Because that's something that Mars and Aries really wants to do. It wants to be in charge and say, well, I'm going to do this and no one can stop me. But here we have these planets in Capricorn putting on the brakes. So there is a need here to regulate your energy, to be mindful of the timing of things and to not try to force it. On August 25th, we have Mercury and Virgo trining Uranus in Taurus retrograde at 10 degrees. And this is a very excited energy. This is ideas, solutions, things happening and clicking. There's connection points that are made here. It is a good day for communications. It's a good time to address something that maybe you were waiting on or put on the back burner. There's something here that could just feel like this is the time to have this conversation. And that's happening August 25th, the same day that Venus in Cancer opposes Jupiter in Capricorn retrograde at 17 degrees. Now the Venus aspects are always a little bit softer because Venus shows us what we want, what we desire, what we need, what feels good, what we want to receive. And as she opposes this Jupiter in Capricorn, she's actually being balanced. It feels like she's being energetically balanced to assess something in a realistic manner to not feel too emotional or sensitive, defensive, vulnerable, but instead to look at how something can be working in her favor, even if it's not something she can see right now. I feel this Venus in Cancer is in for a little bit of a rocky road here as we close out August, because she is going to be opposing Pluto in Capricorn retrograde and Saturn 
in Capricorn retrograde. And these oppositions are going to probably not feel good. And I say that because Venus in Cancer is a feeler. So there is an element here of staying in a place of detachment of what you've learned about these Capricorn energies throughout 2020 and how you can still have your feelings. You can still be aware of what's coming up for you, but to manage it responsibly, to basically tend to your inner world, tend to what's coming up for you in a way that is loving, kind, nurturing, and without needing validation from the external world or from someone else, someone who is older, someone who's a mentor, a parent. It's interesting because the cancer energies are the child within us and the Capricorn energy is the adult within us. And so it's a bit like doing your own caretaking. And what you need to give yourself that you didn't receive when you were younger, but that's coming up and to your awareness, or perhaps just being aware of the energy that you project or put out onto other people for them to take care of instead of validating your own experience and simply honoring who you are and what you need. So there is an energy dynamic here of being aware of your own inner child and how to be your own inner parent and how those two can work in harmony even when it feels like they're very different. So basically we're going to be receiving more grounding over the next week coming back into the body and back into the earth elements that support our everyday life and our physical reality. There is certainly a powerful force of energy coming through as we complete Leo season on the tails of that Leo new moon and as we have these coronial mass ejection energies coming from the sun. So allow this to move you forward into what is important to you right now, into the priorities that are essential and that are productive as well as inspired because as we move through this last quarter of 2020 we're really understanding what we need to live a good life and September has some really fascinating energies about a story unfolding in the first half of the month especially and I'm going to be releasing the Pisces full moon chart video soon that goes through what is happening in September, what is beginning, and the messages that are coming through. So just to know that September has a really lovely energy to it, and it's where some things could click for you that you've been waiting on, that you want, that you're ready for. And it is, of course, the divine timing of it all, and uh, there are some really supportive things that September can potentially bring our way. So thank you so much for listening to this episode of my podcast. As always, you can find out more of my current astrology courses and programs over at mollymccord.online. That's also where you'll find business development programs for those of you who have an online platform that you want to grow and develop. Thank you for your time. As always, I'm very grateful for you, your presence, and your energy. And I'll see you back here on Monday for our next podcast episode. Until then, have a beautiful week ahead as we enter Virgo season.